Today we're going to look at the kiwiberry. We'll check out how it grows and what makes it such a unique plant. If you grow kiwiberries, this is great stuff to know. It'll help you figure out how best to grow it, prune it, train it, and deal with future problems. Kiwiberry is closely related to kiwi fruit, the fuzzy kiwi you know from the grocery store. They are members of the Actinidiaceae family, which includes a lot of plants that you and I have probably never heard of. The family is actually pretty small, containing about 360 species, which are native to Asia and South America. In the genus Actinidia, there are about 60 species. Most people are familiar with the fuzzy kiwi fruit known as Actinidia deliciosa. This species needs a pretty warm climate for production, meaning that most of the world's kiwi fruit is grown in China, New Zealand, Italy, and Chile. Production in the U.S. is comparatively smaller and mostly found in California. A number of fruit-bearing Actinidia species can survive colder temperatures, and these are known as hardy kiwi, or what we now fondly call kiwi berry. So let's take a look at the plant itself. Kiwiberry is technically a climbing vine. A vine is a type of vine that climbs by twisting its stem around a support, while a vine climbs using tendrils or suckers. In its native range, this vine uses other trees for support. In cultivation, we use a sturdy trellis system and prune the plant regularly to keep it under control. When we grow kiwiberry for fruit, we train it to have one permanent trunk. From there, we allow it to grow two horizontal cordons, which are semi-permanent. Shoots grow from buds on the cordons and trunk, although when they grow from the trunk, we usually prune them off right away. When shoots become woody after about a year, they are called canes. This is where most of the leaves and fruit originate. We can also see spurs on kiwiberry vines, these are short, fruiting shoots that grow directly from older wood, like a cordon. Leaves and flowers are produced on shoots growing from one-year-old canes. Flowering buds will produce both flowers and leaves throughout the season. However, some buds that develop later in the season only produce leaves. Kiwiberry is a functionally dioecious plant. This means that female and male flowers are on separate plants. The female flowers become the fruit, but they need the pollen from the male flowers. Generally, one male plant can provide enough pollen for up to eight female plants. It takes about five years for a kiwiberry plant to reach maturity, meaning that it's ready to produce flowers and fruit. Flowers usually appear around the end of May in Minnesota and only last for a few days. This means pollination has to happen quickly, and for that, we rely on bees. After successful pollination, the fruit begins to form around the fertilized ovules. These become the seeds. The kiwiberry is indeed a true berry. So is its larger fuzzy relative, the kiwi fruit. The skin on both are technically edible, but the kiwiberry skin is thinner and fuzz free. Before we go, let's take a quick look underground at the roots of the kiwiberry vine. The roots are shallow and fibrous. Because they're so shallow, they can be easily damaged by cold temperatures when there's not much snow on the ground. When we grow them in a cold place, like Minnesota, we put down a thick layer of mulch in the fall to act like a blanket. This protects them from super cold temperatures. These shallow roots also produce shoot growth, which we call suckers. They usually pop up in a pretty random places and can crowd and compete with the trunk. We usually cut these off when they're a few inches tall. So that's a quick look at the kiwiberry vine. Check out the links in the description below to learn more.